someone saying it's all about making incarceration as normal as possible. You're not wrong, mate. It is normal. It's become normal. They're not trying to, it's done. Now they're just making money off it. You know, they, became, they made it normal to take medication for your illnesses. Now they just make money off it. It's the same sort of um, business idea, if you like. Nothing's different. You're just dishing out different type of medication. One's psychological and one's physical. Because that's all it's prison is. A psychological minefield. Honest to God, like You've got to... Anyway. You've got to be on board to go through there without coming out, without a slash your face. You've got to be on the ball. You can just go through your jail. You can't. You just can't go through your jail. And don't let anyone tell you you can. You're just not getting through your jail. You're not getting your head down every single night and thinking, sweet. You know, when you go to jail, you might have your little short period where you're not sleeping and then you'll get into a sleeping pattern and you might have that sleeping pattern for a week, two weeks, no disturbance. All of a sudden you get a new cellmate who's up till three in the morning shouting out his window. You've got a choice to make. Do you tell him to shut up or you'll smash his head in or do you just tolerate it? Now, if you're not confrontational and you don't want to be getting some nugget coming in your cell in the morning with boiling hot water in some hotel kettle, do you understand what I'm saying? It's just, you don't get a... Even when you're in your cell, right up this end wing, you'll have someone on the bell because they've run out of roll and the bells just go... Bah, 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 for ages because the night cocky's asleep. Do you understand? The night cocky gets up to do his four-hour check or something. The rest of it, he's just mong pissed. Especially in a state prison. In the YP days, that's what they used to do. Turn your telly off, they start to turn. In your YP days, they start to turn and off at like 10 o'clock because a lot of the kids weren't getting up and going to education. And because they weren't going to education, they were getting warnings. And after you get so many warnings, you get dropped in centre levels and the kids were just getting serried. No, because they were watching the telly till threes and twos in the morning. <laughs> Can you not get your own cell? That would be worst thing for me, sell me something like. You can do that, but you've got to have a history in prison. If you've never been to prison and all of a sudden you go in prison and you, and you try and tell them that you want a single cell because you're high risk, you will have to tell them that you are racist, that you will try and escape that you will do all the warning signs that you don't want on your name. You don't want them sort of things on your prison file because they harm you for the rest of your prison life. And trust me, your prison life's not short. The sentence might be short. Look like, that. if you're one of them prolific offenders who goes in and out, 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 that's doing more damage to you than going in and staying there for five years. Honest to God, trust me on that. You know when you, I used, I used to do it and I was doing it a lot because we used to get off with a lot of offences. So we'd be placed into custody and within three and a half months, four months, we'd be acquitted. Because the, the laws were completely different when we were making our name. You could do serious and be acquitted on it like that. Lack of witness, no case. That's the, that's what it was. But you can't just go in the street, mate. So this is why the law got changed, right? It was standard procedure, mandatory, that you had to say, share a cell with another person, if that was the case. It was mandatory when you used to go in prison now. 
and sometimes it'll be a prison cell until the human rights came in. There was five people in one cell in Walton when I first started going there. You should have corner cells with six sets of bunk beds and then have eight and ten lads in the one room. Bit bigger, but still cramped. But then the human rights kicked in. Do you understand? And they had to make the space bigger for each body. And alongside the human rights, you had all mad little things kicking in a prison that made it a lot more less strict. A lot more less strict, a lot more. Not just a little bit, a lot more. So, f I was in jail with this kid in the YPs. His name was Stewie. And he was a little sick, weird kid. Had all tattoos over his body, like upside, upside down crosses on his head. And he had swatch stickers on his elbows and on his forearms and the end of his fingers. And he'd point them at you and all that. You know, it's just some weird sick kid from out the way somewhere. And he was pure racist. He had a he had a crazy problem with racism. This kid, this Stuart, that's his name. I'm sure it was his name. It was Stuart, yeah. And um, he's being kicking off up here, up north, because he was up from round wherever, and he's being kicking off in the prison system up here, and they've shipped him down south. And when he's gone down south, they're not they're not interested. If he's racist, they haven't even read his file. Or if they did, they knew it. You know what I mean? Because again, it was a Muslim kid in the cell, wasn't it? So this racist kid gets put in this cell, this well-known racist who's attacked other, other races before in his life, prison life. And he's being placed in custody for six outside. They went and put him in this cell with this young Asian kid. When the kid's gone to sleep, he's, he's took the, t the table led to the thick. Back then, solid, thick, three foot, like a bat. And he went to town with him while he was asleep. Murdered him in the cell, in a jail down south. This young Asian kid. And on the back of that, the high risk cell, cell share assessment came out. So every inmate that goes in prison now will have a high risk cell share done. Numerous times, depend. Every time you go to a different prison, you will get this high risk cell share done, and it's on the back of that incident with that kid, Stuart. Now, if you remember, I I went into Walton, and when I got put into Walton, I got put into this cell with this kid from the South End. He was about eight years older than me. He was like 29, 30. I just turned 21 and got banged on Walton, got put into a double cell. They didn't give him YP passed. There was well more dangerous people in this prison, they were saying. So he ended up in the, ended up in the cell with this, and he was a scavenger, he was a punter. So as soon as the door opened, I've only been there two or three days, and I, can, I know I shouldn't be in here with this kid because it's getting messy. Because he's an aggressive smacker. He was in Carl Palmer or Jenko. Danny G, you know, a, a crazy addict. And he was big. He, weren't, he was heavy boned. You know, when you get a big punter, but there's nothing on them, but the heavy bones. So that's what this Barry was. What was his name? Barry Williams. Is it Barry Williams? Anyway, he was an handbag snatcher from the South End. You know, he was known for snatching handbags off women outside, whatever. And he's dragged women across pavements and got jail for mad offences like that. And he's landed in my cell, or I've landed in his cell. So I'm sort of a guest, so I've just got to deal with what's what. So he said to me, do you want the top bunk? And I found it unusual, because normally you want the top bunk. Because when you've got someone above you, all your soul falls down because it's not like it's it's a weird bed. All the falls down on top of you, you know, all the little horrible mad stuff. So I thought that's weird, so I thought, yeah, that's right, lad. On the top bed, buzzing. And I know he's he's coming in pinned. I know what a smack head looks like. He's coming in when the doors wherever he's been on association, he's come back in the doors locked and he's pinned and chatting till he calms down. You know, if it's drugs but I'm tolerating it. I'm 21, this 29, and I just think, 
try and get out the cell normal, <laughs> right? Screws are having none of it. I'm going to the office, look, boss, you need to get me out of there. Why? I'm not getting on with it. doesn't matter. You've got to live with it. That's your bed. Get in it. <laughs> so, I'm in there. And the next night, the next morning when I woke up, I felt groggy and I felt like strange. And I'm thinking, what's going on with me? I feel sick a little bit here. Must be this, must be that. And then the following night, I wake up and smoke and smack when I'm asleep. What you do? Tell me what you do in that situation, people. I know what I done. Just dives off the top bunk, knee first, right onto the back of his neck. There was no, no like, he was nearly gouching before I landed, <laughs> you know what I mean? He just had the thing, just went, <sighs> must have blew up in cloud of smoke because I woke up and went, what? Stunk of like a mad fish, <laughs> right? It was weird. And I've just seen him like that with the foil and like that, gouching, I've just went, yeah, off the top bunk, boom! Because he was a hefty kid, so I thought I'm just putting him on the deck with a lump. Landed on him, got him down, jush, done the damage. Bell, get me out of cell. <laughs> Night staff came, she what are you doing? Never took me, took him to the hospital. Got me the next morning. Since that, I've always had a single cell. Right through me prison, single cell. And that's where the story started from people. Someone said, oh, I couldn't handle prison in a double cell. And I said, you've got to, and we ended up at that experience of mine. Yeah, he was smoking smack, mate, heroin, while I was asleep. Mad that, isn't it? He must have done it the night before, and that's why I was feeling rough in the morning when I woke up. It was unusual. You know, I was a clean prisoner. I'd do circuits on the yard every day. You know? If you were in a jail where there was no gym, you know, like your local prisons where you're not, you're getting inadequate gym. I'm one of them prisoners that's doing pull-ups and things off the stairs. But that's jail life, la. It's not good for you, mate. <clears throat> All them lads in there thinking they're the bollocks. No, you're not. They're not the bollocks, mate. They're the ass. Hey, there's not on in there, la. I'm telling you, not on both psychological damage to every single one of them. Every one of them. That's not rehabilitation, now. It's... Look, if you can't rehabilitate fucking adults in that environment, why on earth are you placing kids in there? That's what I say. Now, if kids committed murder, if kids committed, you know, serious sexual offences, that's OK. But when you're banging kids in for robbing a car, the kid's 13, you might have had your car robbed and it might be a head wrecker, but understand what's going on with this 13-year-old kid here. That kid would have taught his lesson if he would have just got a good, good, good speaking to or slap off his parents, OK? Unfortunately, the prison, put, the system put him into an environment that has ruined him. The kid now gets out and he wants to be the best car robber. He doesn't want to stop. He wants to be the best car robber. And, he, and now, when he's robbing the cars, he knows who he can sell them to because he met him in prison. So you've got a 13-year-old kid, 14-year-old kid, 50, whatever, going away for an offence, what a stern little lesson would teach him initially. Getting placed in an environment that is going to completely assassinate his previous personality and character. And when he gets out of custody, the parents see the change in him, everyone sees the change in him. Because he's completely changed. And it's a long road back from where he's going if he doesn't correct himself. And he doesn't. You don't correct yourself. It's impossible for kids to correct themselves once they've experienced prison. 
and prison is not rehabilitation. It's not a rehabilitation centre. I, 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 I don't know why they keep on using rehabilitation when they speak about prison. They're not rehabilitating a single prisoner in there. Not one. A prisoner and a prisoner only is the only person who is re rehabilitating anything. And even then, he's still being left marked. You know, it's not a clean page. Do you understand what I'm saying to you, people? Prison's a no-go. Kids that are rotting away in prison now being manhandled by grown men. Most of them are over 12 and 13 stones and they're wrestling with kids who are 10 stone. And I'm, and the main twisting kids up and snapping thumbs and breaking wrists and hurting ankles and body shots and teeth falling out. Don't think this isn't happening to children in the prison system right now. And it has been for years, mate.